Hello and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Life. I'm Cheryl Hutchins. Roger is joining me now and we're going to continue with Lesson 16 today. We've been studying in um, the Book of Romans for the past lesson or two and uh, Chapter 7. We're going to pick up at verse 10, but we want to pray first of all and um, we want you to have your Bibles and notebooks and so forth handy because what I have realized so much is that many Christians do not understand Romans 7 at all. Um, and it's confusing to a lot of people. So we're, we're trying to take our time working our way through this. Hopefully by the power of the Holy Spirit and the strength of God in us, we're making sense. And we're going to keep working our way through through it and keep moving on because this is an important thing to remember. A lot of Christians still worry about sinning. They still struggle with sin or sinful behavior, I should say, things, uh, behaviors they don't want to have or something like that. So we're going to pick that up. But first, let's pray. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you do not know him, not about him, it is a great time for you to yes, ask yeah. Jesus Christ to come into your life, be the Lord of your life, and to teach you about the Word of God and to teach you about God himself so that you know it personally. Let's pray. Father, thank yes, you. Yes, Lord. God in your name. Thank you today that you we give us you, ears Lord. to hear, Hallelujah. those who listen to this Hallelujah. broadcast. You have something to say to us, Father, that is so yes, vitally important. Do, Help us yes, to grasp do, it, Father. Father. I pray for the one yes, who Jesus. has not made you the Lord of their life. You are so beautiful yes, and so wonderful, and there is no better friend that we could ever have than you, Lord Jesus Christ. So I ask you to deal with the hearts of the people that are watching this broadcast and soften their hearts towards you and awaken them to you, to your loveliness, to the things of God and the beauty of holiness and the beauty of your word. And we thank you for it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start Romans 7 and verse 10 um, where we left off in our last broadcast and it says and the commandment which was ordained to life okay so uh, we read in our last lesson that well then uh, is the law sin and Paul very clearly and firmly says God forbid no and here he is saying the commandment was supposed to give us life yeah that was the purpose. But he says, I found it to be unto death. Verse 11, for sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore, the law is holy. Now listen to this, because a lot of churches just are so negative about the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, but... The Word of God says the commandment is holy. Somewhere in Corinthians it talks about the glory of the Old Covenant. It was not something to be despised. That wasn't the problem. The problem was the sin in the people and them thinking that they could make themselves better how many self-help books are out there on the market today trying to make people better? I read a ton of them before I was born again trying to make myself better. It doesn't work. I'm telling you right now. Only the Word of God can truly go in, heal, deliver, set us on a right path of peace and life. So it wasn't the commandments or the Old Testament law that was unholy or unlovely or sinful. It was something that dwelt in us as human beings. And we'll be looking into that in a few more verses. But it says, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment is holy 
and it's just, and it's good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? How is this possible? He's saying, how is it possible that if God gave this commandment, it was supposed to produce life, it was supposed to be holy, it was supposed to be good, then how come it was death unto me? Instead of bringing me to life, it killed me, basically. God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin. In other words, there had to be a recognition of sin. Before the law came, there wasn't any recognition of sin. Everybody just did whatever. But when the law came, it um, showed up sin. <clears throat> so let's, let me start again. Was in that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. It wasn't the law, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Now, I remember when I was first converted, God showed me something about myself. And it became so disgusting and grossly horrifying to me. I said to God, I don't care what it takes, but you take this out of me. You remove it from me. And it's been a process over many years because he didn't just go in there and cut me to pieces. He showed me the horribleness of this sin in me. And then he began little by little as I read the Word of God. I was around uh, men and women of God who spoke the truth and that thing began to die out of me. So. Um, we have to realize the exceeding sinfulness of sin in order for us to desire to have something done about it. Amen. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I don't want to do. For what I would, that, that do I not. In other words, he's saying, there's a wrestling going on inside. There's something I really want to do, and that's do what the commandment says and what's good, but I can't do it. And the thing that I hate, that's what I end up doing. If then I do that, which I don't want to do, I consent unto the law that it's good. Now, I thought that was a pretty interesting statement because he's saying that I realized that I wanted to do good, but I just didn't have the power to do good. So I realized then in myself that the law really was good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Verse 18, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh man, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. I really will to do it. But how to perform it, how to perform that which is good, I find not. I looked up this word perform, and it means to accomplish or achieve it. In other words, he so wanted to have the law, the commandments of God that are holy and good to be the way his lifestyle was. But he just couldn't achieve it. He found no way to accomplish that. Verse 19 says, For the good that I would, I do not. The good that he wanted to do, he wasn't able to do it. He's repeating himself again. But the evil which I didn't want to do, I ended up doing. Verse 20, now if I do that that I don't want to do, it's no more I doing it, but it's sin that dwelleth in me doing it. So he's realizing here that it's, it's not him as a person, but there's something living inside of him, in his being, that's causing this great dilemma, and it's called sin. 21 says, I find then a law that when I would do good, 
evil is with me. He calls this a law. Now think about this. I find then a law, something that's exercising itself inside of me and becoming the commandment that I obey, that when I would do good, I find evil present with me. For I delight in the law of God after my inner man or my spirit or the heart of me, but I see another law in my members or my body warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. And then he, he just, I can imagine Paul just tolerating this out. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? He was so sick and tired of the inward battle. Sinning, not sinning, sinning, not sinning. As Roger talked about in earlier lessons, that roller coaster ride up and down. And, and you just, it can become so intense, you just feel like dying sometimes. I've been there and I know. But verse 25 says, I thank God. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ took care of the sin problem. Yes, he did. He took care of it. All of it for everybody. So then with the mind... I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. And I'm going to let Roger pick it up from here as we go into Romans chapter 8. Amen. Yeah, I want you to keep in mind as we go in there, very good, Cheryl. Uh, it's really the Spirit of the Lord, uh, the understanding is beginning to become so uh, clear about the dilemma that Paul is painted in uh, in chapter seven, and how uh, under the law, under the the, the commandments that uh, that were under there under the law, it was almost it was impossible for us to uh, achieve righteousness through that. We could do everything, but there still had to be a sacrifice. There still had to be year after year the blood of, uh, of, the, of lambs and bulls and goats and all those sacrifices of, of uh, uh, pigeons and uh, so forth. All There had to be blood. Without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. But uh, as we come into chapter 8, uh, the, keep in mind the chapters were made by men. Chapter 8 is just an extension of what's happening in in seven except things begin to turn around because i want you to notice as we we read through in chapter seven there's things like uh the the law within and like uh, the law those within things that it taught and, and all the lesson we're talking been talking about uh, the inward battle now uh, that's why we, we're talking about the witness within because in order for there to be uh, life, if there's a voice that's speaking death, I went to pray last week in our city and went on the, the square of, of the town and, and I could feel uh, so much. There's been some movies made here. There's been in the church over the past five years, there's been such a... a, a atmosphere of, of death and religion uh, that's been manifested in some uh, in some places uh, and I'm not talking about any one particular things so I don't get offended by what I'm saying but uh, but I felt such a negatively charged atmosphere that God said you have to begin to speak into the atmosphere positive uh, uh, or life feel recharge the atmosphere recharge if your home is a place where it's all the time negative atmosphere you need to begin to speak open your mouth and speak into the atmosphere of your home life 
giving words that will begin to cause things to turn around. Uh, if you want your children to change, they have to be, they have to hear life giving words. If you want your, uh, if you want your husband, your wife, the whole atmosphere in your house, if you want your financial situation to turn around, then begin to speak about the prosperity of God and the, the power of God. If you, if you want uh, sickness and disease to be gone from your home, you need to begin to speak the life giving words of uh, of the Bible, of the Word of God that declares that we are the healed of the Lord. So when we began to do that, Cheryl, a while ago I felt like, uh, you know, sometimes uh, people look good on the outside. They, they, they've <laughs> learned, even the world, they've learned to dress it up, to present themselves like every, they've got everything together. But, but inwardly, I see it on people on television sometimes, the politicians and so forth, uh, the, 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 like they've got everything together, but yet inwardly there's a, there's a wrestling match. There's something going on. And see, we see that in, in chapter 7. We've seen Paul wrestling with this, uh, what, I, what I want to do, I find myself not doing, and what I don't want to do, that's what I find myself doing. And uh, that's the way the flesh pulls us its own way. The uh, mind, the, 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 the soulish realm pulls us its own way. Uh, but why, how are we going to, uh, to get over this? Cheryl read, read just as we were leaving in the 24th verse uh, on the last uh, lesson uh, where Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Uh, and, and he began to realize it's not going to be through continuing to try to keep the law. It's not going to be through continuing uh, to try to work his own righteousness because he said, I thank God that Jesus, through Jesus Christ our Lord, uh, so then with my mind I myself serve uh, serve the law of God, but with my flesh, the, the law of sin. Uh, but watch what happens when we come into chapter 8. It's not, it's, he's actually in the same subject. He's not changed subjects, although the chapters change. And he says in verse 1 here, I, there, there, there is therefore now, somebody say now. Now. There is therefore now. He's come right. from the, yeah. the law of the past, what he, right. he kept saying, uh, we were in darkness. We were delivered from uh, the law. But now in, in chapter 8, he comes from the what we were to the now. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. There's something in uh, Galatians 5 and 6 uh, that I wanted... Uh, Will you go back and find that for me, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. uh, Galatians 5, 6, uh, 6, I want to identify with that uh, scripture. Let me read it again while she's finding that. Uh, there is therefore now, say now, now d quit, living, quit living in what you were. Quit living under the condemnation of what you were. It says there, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are where? In Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, under the law, the flesh was dictating the outcome. Under the law, the emotions, the pain of, of the law was dictating the outcome. But now, uh, it's the Spirit that begins to bring forth uh, the outcome. Okay. Uh, now, in Galatians uh, the fifth chapter and sixth verse, I made note of this uh, whenever we were reading it a couple of lessons ago. Uh, it says, For in Christ, uh, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uh, uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. What happens when we're in Christ Jesus? We begin to go under a new law. And uh, Paul called it the royal law of love. Love begins to work in our members now. And love uh, never fails. See? And, and as he comes into chapter 8, there's therefore now no condemnation them which are where? In Christ Jesus, 
Those, if you're in Christ Jesus, we're not only uh, out from under condemnation, but now we're walking in the spirit of love. We're walking under the royal law. There is a new law that's now working in our, uh, in our hearts. But we walk not after the flesh, not after the, the carnal commandments. We're not trying to, to keep it, keep the law by the flesh now. Now by the spirit, we are operating under a royal law. Uh, verse 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to God. For, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free. Hath or has. It has it's, it's in the now. Still in the now. The, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Look at, look at your neighbor, look at yourself, uh, look at your television, whatever, your, your, your telephone, whatever, and say, I'm free. I'm free from that spirit uh, of sin and that law of the spirit of sin and death. Uh, verse 3 says, For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Why was Paul in this dilemma? Why was he so easily portraying something we could identify with in chapter 7 because it, the, it was of the flesh. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son. Something just happened because we're not, we're not under the carnal commandments anymore. We're not under uh, uh, sacrifices that have to be done every year. The lamb that takes away the sins of the world has stepped up and now sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin. Not you. You're no longer walking under condemnation. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. It's the sin that's condemned. It's not you. Right. And now verse 4 says... Uh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, I didn't come to take away the law, I come to fulfill it. How? Well, he fulfilled it himself, but can I tell you, he went a step further, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled yeah. in us. We're talking about the witness within. There's something, there's a, that God's within you, born again Christian, spirit filled Christian, declaring you the law is fulfilled where in you. And there's a witness telling you now that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. All right, now what does that mean? Let me, let me explain. Some people have a, a problem with that term and even try to, to dismiss it from Romans 8 here. Uh, but if we don't understand what happened to give us to authority over the flesh, we go back under, into chapter 7. We go back into the same dilemma. The law is, is holy, but I'm, I'm just flesh. I'm just uh, carnal but now the spirit of life is causing us to walk as conquerors as as righteousness of God in Christ fulfill the righteousness of the law is for, uh, the, fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit now verse 5 says for they that are after the flesh that's not you anymore you're born again for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, what happens? They that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now, how do we do that? Somebody said, well, I understand what you're saying, but it's not being worked in me. But let me go back to what I said on the, on the previous uh, lesson, is that there's going to be all kinds of things that come at you that try to, to try to bring you out of the reality of what he's saying here in, in Romans the 8th chapter. 
Uh, but let me tell you, when all that, that warfare begins to go on, remember the weapons of your war, warfare are not carnal. And there is a witness within. I want to keep coming back there because that's the whole purpose of what God began to direct as we started these lessons. The witness within. The witness within wants to talk to you. Jesus wants you to be led by the Spirit. He wants you uh, to, to manifest the overcoming not in a legalistic way. I'm not sitting here showing sure, no, I'm not sitting here and saying, well, bless God, you've got to get right. We're showing you that he's there uh, walking with you to cause you to be that overcomer uh, that he desired for you to be. Now, what do you got? I, when I was trying to understand this myself several years back, one thing that helped me, and I feel like there's somebody who really needs to hear this, is um, I was trying to understand the difference in flesh and spirit, and I didn't have a clue. But what I did know is that in Galatians 5, 19, there was a list of the works of the flesh. So what I did is I went there, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, Now the works of the flesh are manifested, or are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. And that's where I'm going to stop because what I had to do is say, well, I don't want any of these things to be in my life, and I don't see any of these things in my life, and my desire is no longer for any of these things in my life. So it helped me to come to the understanding of the difference in following after the, the Spirit. What I realized is that everything in me wanted to know God. Everything in me wanted to know what the Word of God said. And so, just, I'm one of those persons where things have to be real specific. So God was gracious to me and got real specific with me. And I, I just had to come to that realization, realization that, no, I'm not walking after the flesh. Amen. And I feel like somebody really needs to settle that in yourself today. You're not desiring those things. No, you're not. I don't care what voice is telling you that, that's not the truth. Now, this is where that inward witness comes in. You know inside of yourself that you do not desire to do anything on that list of things I just read. But what you desire is to know God. So be at peace in that. Settle it once and for all and you can say to the enemy of your soul, He's called the enemy of your soul for a reason because that's what stirs us up. Our mind going crazy and our emotions going crazy and not being able to just come to a conclusion. You have the right to say, I serve the law of God. Amen. I walk after the Spirit. Amen. You know, this, the six verses, the last verse in our lesson that we've got down uh, for the, the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. And it goes along with just what Cheryl just said. And the, the trouble is we've got to read this understanding what was said in, in chapter 7 and realizing that in the first verse of the eighth chapter he said, there is therefore now. We're, this is now. Uh, Verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death. You were carnally minded. But now, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. I want to end this program today by speaking peace to you. Amen. You know, we're, we're talking about those things, those sinful things, those painful things. But I'm also talking, we're also talking about that voice within. And if you listen real close right now, you'll hear it say, you'll hear that voice within, you'll hear him say, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, as we leave the air today. God, there is therefore now no condemnation.
to them which are in Christ Jesus, remove all condemnation, because you made all things available out of the word of God unto us, and we don't walk under condemnation, but we freely walk in the Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Stay with us. We've got a couple more lessons to uh, to go, and uh, each day I, I post them. They're on YouTube and Twitter uh, and Facebook. You can go back on and watch them. God bless you. We love you and see you next time.